Look, there's a huge amount of scaremongering that's going on from parts of the establishment who are looking for any excuse to stop this or to delay it. Now, the instruction of the people wasn't leave subject to a deal, it was leave. Leave. It's not, it wasn't even Brexit, it's actually worse than remaining in the European Union. I want a clean, proper Brexit, All right, let's be very clean. clear. What we need is leadership that is prepared to either negotiate a good deal or walk away. No deal, no problem, no money, we'll save 31 billion, we'll spend it back in the UK. Garbage in equals garbage out with these economic models. There's a wonderful opportunity, as long as we leave the customs union, because that's crucial. We can then have a free port, yeah, yeah. Sorry, and free ports generate thousands and thousands of manufacturing jobs. If we have no deal, we're not going to pay 39 billion, unless our negotiators are incredibly weak, and that actually really concentrates the minds of the European Union, because if they haven't got 39 billion of our money, they are bust. Oh, come on. Let's be clear. We all know in business that no deal is better than a bad deal. Of course it's true. Every business person knows that, and this is the the worst deal ever in history to pay 39 billion pounds for nothing guaranteed in return. Please welcome to the stage, Richard Tice. I've definitely come to the right party, haven't I? That's a good start. Welcome Brexiteers. We are all Brexiteers, aren't we? Yeah. Things are looking up. It's going to be a good afternoon. It's fantastic to be here in the North East. Full of passion, full of levers. There's, there's clearly no chance of anybody falling asleep this afternoon, but I do like a bit of audience participation. And so I just want to make sure that we're all on the right side. What do we want? Brexit! When do we want it? Now! Excellent. We're definitely on song. Um, if some of you may know, uh, I'm Richard Tice. Uh, the day job, uh, I'm a businessman. I've been involved as an entrepreneur, setting up small businesses, running medium size and large businesses, mainly in the property sector. I've built thousands of homes, created tens of thousands of construction jobs and been involved in bringing hundreds of millions of pounds of investment into the economy. Rightly or wrongly, <laughs> none of us are perfect, least of all me, and I made a slight mistake. I was a member of the wrong party for some time. I'm sorry. But the good news is I resigned from that party a few weeks ago when I accepted, when I accepted the job. <laughs> I accepted the invitation to be chairman of the Brexit party. And it's hard to believe because you may have noticed we've been quite busy. Um, we've only been going four weeks and a day. Um, it feels like a little bit longer, I must be honest. Um, but uh, since then, you know, we have, we've been at rallies up and down the country. We have energised Brexiteers. We've given belief back into the huge opportunity that Brexit is. And just before we carry on, I thought we'd just show you our launch video of the Brexit party. Hopefully the technology will work on the screen. We have been betrayed. That is why I set up the Brexit party. It's why we're going to fight the European elections on May the 23rd. And that is just the beginning of what is needed in this country. Democracy is under threat. And when politicians fail to deliver, there must be consequences. I was too young to vote in 2016, but now I support the Brexit party because I believe in delivering on democracy. It's time to recognise that actually we are an incredible nation. This isn't about left or right. It's about standing up for our our right to be heard. Successful, hard-working, so much to be confident, enthusiastic and optimistic about. That's why I'm supporting the Brexit party. We are a single nation. We wish to remain a nation. They must adhere to the promises made to the people. Let's be optimistic. And for the benefit of our children and grandchildren, if you want a home and you're a Brexiteer, you join the Brexit party now.
we can do so much better than currently we're getting from our members of parliament. We want to be an independent, self-governing nation, making its own laws, controlling its own borders, and being proud of who we are as a people. Join us, help us, support us, do what you can for us. We need change in this country and we need it now. Britain needs the Brexit Party and the Brexit Party needs you. As you'll hear later, ladies and gentlemen, he's definitely not lost his touch. Um, but I just need to check, hopefully, many of you, how many of you, hands up, are registered supporters already of the Brexit Party? Excellent. There's one or two cheeky chappies and lassies who are not yet joined. Please make sure you join. We've got almost 90,000 people have joined as registered supporters in just four weeks. We're the fastest growing political movement in this country. And the reason is that proud Brexiteers, the 17.4 million people, and indeed many others, we've had enough. We know that this country deserves so much better. We can do so much better. And yet, we've been utterly humiliated. Not once, but twice, did our Prime Minister have to write a begging letter to overseas leaders and bungling Brussels bureaucrats asking for permission as to how we should conduct ourselves. Total and utter humiliation, incompetent leadership, incapable negotiators, and MPs trying to do dodgy, dirty, backroom deals about a customs union in order to try and stop these elections. It's an absolute, all sorts. <laughs> what we do know is it's a shambles. You've got members of parliament trying to sell this proud, strong, incredible nation down the river, tying us up in a straitjacket and wanting to give the key to the padlock to people in Brussels. It's an absolute disgrace. And the complicity of the civil service within that is also shocking. They've shown themselves to be completely untrustworthy, not up to the job. That's why we launched the Brexit Party, because it's time for capable, competent, common sense politics. It's not a question of left or right, it's about right or wrong. And we intend... <laughs> we intend, ladies and gentlemen, we're not a one-issue party, we are here to stay, and we intend to take on the establishment. We're going to take on the vested interests. We're going to take on the civil service because we know that actually, if this country was properly run, properly governed, we would all be in a much, much better place. And that's why. And we'll hear, we'll hear this afternoon from three incredible candidates for the Brexit Party for the North East. And, you know, we hope that they will get elected. It's absolutely vital that everybody turns out in this election. You've got to spread the message, spread the word to your family, your friends, friends of friends. It is so important to vote. But these candidates, almost all of our 70 candidates, very few of them have ever stood for political office before, myself included. And it takes courage and bravery to put your head above the parapet. Because, you know, you know what it's like, social media and stuff, it just takes a bit of courage. And the quality of these candidates, their skills, their achievements, their ability to succeed at things, to make things happen, get things done, that's been truly humbling. I interviewed almost 150 candidates, and it really was humbling the quality of these people who are prepared to say, enough's enough, I've got to get stuck in. And we've just this week opened on our website the applications for people who want to be parliamentary candidates for the next general election to stand for the Brexit Party. <laughs> Because, because we know, we know that with capable, successful people, we can invest our own taxpayers' cash, our money. It's not government money, it's our taxpayers' cash. We can invest it better, spend it more wisely, more smartly, cut out the waste 
cut out the rip-offs. We all know where they are. These are the opportunities to run this country so much better. So, ladies and gentlemen, we've got to send a clear message back to Westminster. We meant it the first time. Leave means... Leave. I'm hard of hearing. What? Leave means... Leave. That's better. Thank you very much. So, we've got this great opportunity. It just requires leadership. And it's in pretty short supply at the moment. We need to be confident. We need to embrace Brexit as a huge opportunity to be embraced with hope, with confidence, with aspiration, with enthusiasm. We can do so much if we have that confidence. And ladies and gentlemen, if we believe in Britain. Do we believe in Britain? Yes! Excellent. So, now, our first speaker, our first speaker has been involved in businesses all over the world, from Africa to the Middle East to the Far East. He's been a Eurosceptic for decades. He's been a long-standing political campaigner for the Brexit cause. It's fantastic that he's put himself forward as a candidate. I've known Brian uh, for many years. It really is great to have him standing as a candidate for the North East. Please give a huge welcome, Brian Monteith. Please welcome to the stage, Brian Monteith. Thank you, Richard. This is my lucky suit. It was the suit I wore on the night of the Count back in 2016, and it's the suit I'll be wearing on the Count uh, on the 26th of May when we count the victory that we're going to have in Northeast Region. And I have in my wall, in my office, a photograph of me with a, a bottle of beer, raising my arm in this suit as the announcement of the Sunderland result came in. It just so happened, the media were there, they captured the moment, it's the best photograph on my wall. But two weeks ago, I never thought I would be standing here today as a candidate for the European Parliament elections. They should not be necessary. They should not be taking place. We should have left the European Union on the 29th of March. But, but we were lied to and I like my colleagues here today, believed we had to make a stand. We've got to give the British people a way to say no more lies. And you, you never expected to be here today either. No matter how you voted, leave or remain, you believed the referendum and all the promises that came after it would be honoured and would be respected. But they haven't been. So I'm here, and you're here, because we are annoyed. We're angry, and we've every right to be, because our country has been humiliated by our Prime Minister begging and pleading for scraps and morsels from the EU, and all the while, while lying to us. Now this makes me as mad as hell. It makes many of you as mad as hell. Well, we don't need to get mad. We need to get even. <laughs> we need to show them we're not going to take it anymore. The Prime Minister said we would leave the single market. 
It was a lie. The Prime Minister said we would leave the customs union. It was a lie. The Prime Minister said no deal is better than a bad deal. Even though it's the truth, it was a lie. It was the abstract. The Prime Minister tells us we will leave the common fisheries policy. That too is a lie, by the way. The Prime Minister said we will do our own trade deals. It is a lie. After the referendum, when David Cameron walked off stage left and Theresa May walked on stage right, she said, Brexit means Brexit. And many of us believed it would be true. We invested our trust in her, but it too was a lie. So when I'm at home in the UK, it appalls me. When I'm working abroad, it embarrasses me. But our Prime Minister is a serial liar. I honestly think she would not know the truth if it slapped her in the face. The Labour Party leader, of course. Is no, is no better. His manifesto said Labour would respect the referendum. It was a lie. His manifesto accepted we would leave the single mar market. It was a lie. How can anyone trust Jeremy Corbyn on Brexit when he has more positions than there are in the Kama Sutra? <laughs> Diane Abbott told me that joke. <laughs> Jeremy Corbyn has ducked and dived. So he sides with no one, but he enrages everyone. He is a serial deceiver. And of course, we've got Chucky Omuna, John Major, Hilary Benn, Anna Subri. I know if I paused, I know. I know if I pause you'd like to boo them all, but the list is very long, we don't have time. But they all said they would respect the result. They said it was the one and only time there would be a referendum and they're campaigning for a second one. They are serial deceivers and liars too. And what this means, what this actually means in the poll coming up is that if any electors vote Conservative on the 23rd of May, they will be condoning, condoning one of any, every one of Theresa May's lies. Every single one will be condoned. They will be condoning a Tory party that disrespects the people and our democracy. And of course, if any electors vote Labour on the 23rd of May, they will be condoning every one of Jeremy Corbyn's deceptions. They will be condoning a Labour party that disrespects the people and our democracy, especially the people in the North East, by the way. As Richard said, this is not about right or left, it's about right or wrong. The Brexit party is in the right and Labour and the Tories are in the wrong. So, to finish, I appeal to remain voters as much as to leave voters, and that is important. If you believe yourself to be honourable, to be honest, to be respectful of democracy, to be proud of our British way of accepting the outcomes of general elections and referenda, and I've been on the wrong side many times, then you cannot vote Labour or Tory, because democracy must be respected and defended. You have every right to be as mad as hell, but let's get even. Only voting for the Brexit party can achieve that. Thank you. Isn't it great? Grab a He's a great speaker. He's a great speaker. Imagine what he could do in the European Parliament for the North East. He'll give it to him.
We can have a bit of fun in politics. I promised I wouldn't let away his secret, but I'm going to anyway. In 2007, he was a judge in the World Pie Championships. <laughs> <laughs> Moving swiftly on. Um, our next speaker, ladies and gentlemen, uh, is a true star. She's had a number of careers, actually. And this potentially, we think, is her most promising yet. Her first phase, her first sort of phase of her career, she was an MP for a certain party for some 23 years. But that was really her warm-up phase. <laughs> then she realised that actually, much more fun could be had in the second phase of her career, when she decided to teach the country how to dance. <laughs> on Strictly Come Dancing. Not content... Not content with that, there was, of course, Celebrity Big Brother. But this, ladies and gentlemen, is actually the most important part of her career because she is going to help win these elections for the Brexit Party. Before we welcome her to the stage, let's just see her in action on the video. We are in a complete mess. We've got the worst Prime Minister since Anton Eden. We've got the worst leader of the opposition in the entire history of the Labour Party. And we've got the worst Parliament since Oliver Cromwell. And with that combination, we are actually engaged in the most important international negotiations for 50 years. Now, let me finish this sentence, Adam, then over to you. There's a growing disengagement between the people and Parliament. So what I want is an overwhelming, an overwhelming uh, Brexit victory on May the 23rd. That That's seen. what I want. Please welcome to the stage, Anne Whittacombe. and say, oh poor dears, they didn't know what they were voting for. We knew exactly what we were voting for. But did they know what way they were voting for? Oh, I think they did. They knew that they were voting to keep Britain under the control of a foreign power. They knew that they were voting for future generations to have no say over the laws and the borders and the trade 
and the democracy of the country in which they were born. That is what they were voting for. We have heard much today, and we will hear more, about how we have been betrayed. Oh, but others have been betrayed. Future generations are being betrayed. And the legacy of those who gave life and limb itself for our freedom is being betrayed. just the government which is doing the betraying. It is the whole of our political class at Westminster bar a very few who are doing the betraying. And perhaps one of the things I enjoyed most about the recent local election results was the expression on Jeremy Corbyn's face when he realised that it wasn't enough just to fudge and to try and make life difficult for the government. When he realised that his own supporters were deserting because they want their democratic decision delivered. That was when the Prime Minister had a real chance. She could have said to Mr Corbyn, right Jeremy, we're all in trouble, now we have to do what the people told us to do. Yeah. Instead of which, what did she say? Oh Jeremy, you want a customs union? Certainly Jeremy. Oh, Jeremy, you want us to stay aligned to the single market? Certainly, Jeremy. Oh, Jeremy, you want us tied to EU law? Just tell me how much law you want us to stay tied to, Jeremy. Well, the message of those local elections and the message of these Euro elections is really very simple. Either those at Westminster let Britain leave or we make them leave. <laughs> finally see the delight, the light and deliver Brexit, well, all well and good, providing it is a Brexit. Pro providing we do not stand there with one leg in and one leg out in some crazy sort of hokey-cokey, being neither out of Europe nor in Europe. Out of Europe means out of Europe. <laughs> don't take us out of the EU, then come the next general election, the Brexit party will take over Westminster and take us out of the EU. <laughs> few weeks ago, I was still a Conservative. And then, 
I stood in a Norwegian fjord. Well, I wasn't actually in the fjord, I was on dry land. And I felt in my pocket for my mobile phone. Sometimes mobile phones are the curse of the age. But on that occasion, it determined a lot of things because I pulled out my mobile and I telephoned Nigel Farage. <laughs> said to him what the nation is now saying to Westminster. I said to him, I have had enough. We have had enough and we will stand no more fudge, no more lies, no more pathetic surrender from the people who promised us something completely different when they came asking for our votes in 2017. <laughs> now, from today, we must make sure that we get as many people as possible, not only to join the Brexit party, but to make their voices heard, to say clearly, so that in Westminster they can hear it all the way from Sunderland. Let them hear it. And we should say, we don't know what you're doing uh, in your bubble at Westminster, but out here, up and down the nation, and as far away as Sunderland and beyond, we want to leave. What do we want to do? Leave! Isn't she great? I did say, I did say she was just getting going, didn't I? I mean, she is a true inspiration to us all. It's fantastic to have Anne on board with the Brexit party. Thank you, Anne. And it's not easy following that for any speaker, but uh, our next speaker was born and bred in the North East. He lives, lives in Hartlepool for the last five years has been a local councillor, and he wrote a speculative email when he was aged 20 to Nigel, just seeing if he could help. And basically, he's been a massive Brexiteer, passionately campaigned for the cause ever since. It's fantastic to have John Tennant as our candidate for the North East. Please give a huge welcome, John Tennant. Please welcome to the stage, John Tennant. Well, thank you, Richard, for that introduction. How did we all get here? In these European elections, three years after we voted to leave. Well, I can tell you, because our politicians in Westminster have failed to uphold our decision to leave, a decision they asked us to make. <laughs> Worse still, Worse still, they said they would implement the decision we make. Have they done that? No. I would like to quote a former British commissioner, actually a MP in the town I live in, Peter Mandelson. Oh, he's popular, isn't he? He said during the referendum, this is a decision, a once and for all decision. 
we will not be taking a decision like this again in our lifetime. He goes on to say, I say that with all the conviction and sincerity I have. <laughs> and we all know he's not a quitter. <laughs> they even said, after the referendum, that we didn't know what we were voting for. Did you know what we were voting for? Yes! yes it meant leaving the single market leaving the customs union and taking back our ability to govern ourselves. I and many of you voted to leave, campaigned hard for leave and we won the referendum. If the Tories and the Labour Party won't act upon the wishes of the electorate, then our job is to make them leave. Now, now, the recent local elections gave a very clear indication that the electorate are fed up with their failure to represent our wishes. As a local councillor who campaigned in the recent elections, I know firsthand the anger and frustration that people have at the traditional parties. And they know that they have been duplicitous in their handling of Brexit. So they told them where to go. You can do it again. The Brexit party is here and we're going to change politics for good. And what's, and what's Jeremy Corbyn's big idea? A second referendum. Well, it didn't work very well for me in the local elections. How do you think that's going to go down with the five million people in the North East that voted to leave? I don't think it's going to go down very well, is it? Now this is the most important election campaign we've ever seen in this country. It is about respecting the will of the people. It's about respecting and upholding democracy in the face of the biggest establishment attempt to ignore your wishes. Their duplicity will be punished and only the Brexit party can deliver a hammer blow to the two party system that has failed us. I think we should be optimistic about Brexit, about our future outside the EU. We can trade with 85% of the world that doesn't take orders from Brussels. We can take back our fishing waters, our laws and our democracy. Yeah. So I've just got one more question to ask you. Do you want Britain to be a self-independent governing country? Yeah then with your help and the Brexit party, we can be. Thank you. John Tennant, ladies and gentlemen. Have a few there. Again, showing great courage to stand up for democracy, for freedom. Our next speaker, ladies and gentlemen, again a few weeks ago, never imagined that he'd be standing for public office. He studied here in Sunderland his degree in economics and geology. He's had a business career all across the world, helping businesses grow and develop from Asia to the US to the Middle East. So he understands, actually, the global opportunities out there for this great country for businesses to grow and to thrive. But he's been prepared to throw his hat into the ring. It's fantastic to have someone of Richard's uh, caliber and competence as a Brexit party candidate. Please give a huge welcome, Richard Monaghan. Please welcome to the stage, Richard Monaghan.
Thank you for that welcome. Thank you. Well, what a mess. The greatest democratic vote in the history of our nation to leave the EU. And what have we seen? Abject failure from both the Labour and the Conservative parties. Instead, they want to put their own political agendas ahead of the national interest. Now, like many of you, I've watched with horror and frustration over the last three years at the self-inflicted mess that our Prime Minister has created. I became increasingly concerned that she had no intention of ever taking us out of the EU. <laughs> Promises are important. We all know that. We teach our children that. But what about government promises? The promises contained in the booklet that was sent out to every household in this country. At a great cost, nine million pounds. I do charity work out in Nepal, and let me tell you, nine million pounds would go a long way with the orphanages that I support out there. <laughs> that booklet told us all that if we left the EU, it meant leaving the customs union, leaving the single market, leaving the jurisdiction of the European Court of Justice, the promise that our vote would be respected. And our politicians that made these promises, they've broken every one of them. Sometimes I think I should have known better. For years we know that the political elite have trouble with the truth. We've seen all the parties take different positions and use words, misuse words, to try to diffuse the debate, to confuse us. We even saw Mark Carney, the governor of the Bank of England. <laughs> I'm glad you feel the way I do. This is a man that, as, a, as an accountant, I always was taught to respect these people, the Chancellor of the Exchequer, Governor of the Bank of England, the BBC. <laughs> they have been far from independent. But then something wonderful happened. Far from being cowed and intimidated, we began to see through the lies. And on the 23rd of June, 2016, the people delivered a slap in the face that led to the resignation of the Prime Minister, David Cameron. Ladies and gentlemen, on the 23rd of May, you have the ability to deliver that same slap in the face that will lead to the downfall of Theresa May. Are you ready to do that? You would have thought they'd have learned the lessons from previous campaigns and realised that we weren't prepared to be misled by the use of language. But they're still at it. I grew tired of hearing the phrase, no deal, used without the word catastrophic in front of it. <laughs> I grew tired of our politicians being more interested in their careers than in the interests of our people. Yeah. <laughs> I grew tired at the suggestion that Great Britain, the fifth largest economy in the world, somehow could not succeed outside the EU. Terms like soft Brexit, hard Brexit, they were all invented to blur the truth and to stop us from achieving what it was we voted for. I can tell you, if you want to use the word catastrophic, I have a very good use for it. What would be catastrophic would be to accept Theresa May's half-baked deal. I decided I'd had enough. Just a few weeks ago, I decided I would not put up with being lied to, being misled, and having my democratic vote ignored. So for the first time in my life, I decided to join a political party, a party with a positive message, a party that believes in our country and is willing to stand up for all of us.
the Brexit Party. Of course, of course, there are many reasons people voted to leave the EU, not least to regain our sovereignty, our sovereignty and our sense of independence. But to me, it seemed that the success of Brexit would ultimately be measured in terms of the economy and would depend on Britain leaving the customs union and gaining the freedom to trade with the world on our own terms. And that is why a WTO Brexit is a must. It's the only logical exit from the EU, and we will only get it if we are clear and decisive in our negotiations, if we place WTO terms firmly back on the negotiating table, and if we have confidence in walking away if necessary. But it seems the Labour Party and a few Tory defectors would like a second referendum. A people's vote, they called it. And then when it was pointed out to them that actually we'd already had a people's vote, they quickly... They quickly rebranded it a confirmatory referendum. And I try to remember, when did we last have a confirmatory general election? Let's be really clear about this. Any second vote is a denial of the 2016 referendum. <laughs> a word on democracy before I finish. Our democracy has been made possible by sacrifice. The sacrifice of the Manchester mill workers, of the suffragettes, people that fought for their right to vote by members of our own families who put their lives on the line and sometimes gave, gave their lives to defend our status as a free democratic country. And yet, And yet most of our MPs would have us disregard this incredible sacrifice. Are we going to let them get away with this? No. I've had enough. That's why I'm standing as a candidate for the Brexit Party, because the time has come to change politics. To stand up to those who would look down on us, to deny us our voice. We cannot allow that to happen. So like my fellow candidates, I will ask that you turn out on the 23rd of May to vote for the Brexit Party. But I'm also going to ask something more of you. Would you please take this message of confidence away from here to your friends, your families, your work colleagues, and tell them that if they want change, they need to make it happen by coming out and voting for the Brexit Party on May the 23rd. Together, we will stand up for democracy, and together, we will change politics for good. Thank you very much. Thank you, Richard. It takes a lot of courage to stand up and put your head above the parapet, as Richard and the other candidates have done. But of course, we all know that our final speaker this afternoon has, of course, shown the greatest courage of all. Without question, he's had more influence more success in changing the course of British politics because his commitment over the last 25 or so years to the cause of Brexit, of leaving the European Union, has been the greatest of all. The abuse, the vitriol that he's had, the threats to his own security and that of his family is nothing short of shocking. But he has stood with it. And the good news is, ladies and gentlemen, I've had him in training recently. <laughs> so. He's on, he's on the best form ever. Before we welcome him to the stage, let's just remind ourselves of him in action on the screen. 
we have a parliament that is now completely out of touch with our country. I think politics is broken. Our task and our mission is to change politics for good. The Brexit Party has been formed because, very simply, the government and parliament do not wish to deliver Brexit. We are fighting back. The whole of our politics needs changing. The two-party system doesn't work anymore. If they thought we were going to give up, they've got another think coming. This country needs the Brexit Party, and the Brexit Party needs you. Thank you. Please welcome to the stage. Nigel Farage. After a quarter of a century campaigning and thinking for much of that time, I would probably end up as the patron saint of lost causes. <laughs> Along came the 23rd of June 2016, that referendum that I pressured the establishment so much into giving. And I've got to tell you, when the polls closed at 10 o'clock, I sunk into a sense of gloom. I prepared myself for the worst. I'd given the best part of my adult life to fighting for what was going to be this one and only chance to win back the independence, self-government, and can I say pride in this country. So I prepared myself for the worst, until at about one o'clock in the morning, up came somebody on the screen who said, I the returning officer for Sunderland, <laughs> declare the result of the referendum vote as follows, remain 52,000. Leave 83,000! <laughs> I, I mean, wow, amazing! And I thought, suddenly my mood changed. I might have even poured myself a glass of something at that moment. But it was Sunderland, wasn't it? It was Sunderland that made us realise we could do this. And I've never felt more happy, more optimistic in the whole of my life because we'd stood up. Here you've been told the car plant might move. Across the rest of the country, we had the Chancellor, George Osborne. <laughs> Ghastly individual. <laughs> Telling us, do you remember, taxes would go up, interest rates would rise, we'd all lose our jobs. We even had a very anti-British President of the United States of America, Obama, telling us we'd go to the back of the queue. We had every single threat put upon us. 
I think I remember once even being told that if we voted leave, plagues of black locusts would descend. <laughs> but despite it all, we voted leave. You here in Sunderland led the way, and I thought we'd won. <laughs> well, I wouldn't cheer too loudly if I were you, because I said I thought we'd won. And then we had a general election, do you remember in 2017? Yes. When both the Labour and Conservative parties said they would uphold the result of the referendum. And then we had 500 members of Parliament vote for Article 50, which then went into British law. And Article 50 said, we will leave the European Union at 11 p.m on the 29th of March 2019 with or without a deal. And that is what should have happened. But it hasn't happened. It hasn't happened partly because of a dishonest, duplicitous and utterly useless Prime Minister in Theresa May. No question, she is the worst Prime Minister in the history of this country, bar none. Terrible. And what she's done, she's presented us with what she calls her deal. Her deal is a new European treaty. A treaty that will cost us, for reasons I've yet to understand, £39 billion. Pounds. A treaty that may well leave us trapped inside the EU's customs union in perpetuity. This treaty that she wants to put through is more like a surrender document of a nation that has been defeated in war. She has, she has, in bowing down to every demand made by Monsieur Barnier, every insult thrown by Mr Tusk, and every attack on this country by the ghastly Guy Verhofstadt, and she even, she even bows down to Jean-Claude Juncker when he's at work before lunch every day. She has humiliated our country on the international stage and I've had enough of it. I think we should stand up and be proud of who we are as a nation. But it isn't, it isn't just the Conservative Party that have betrayed the country over Brexit, the Labour Party have played as big a role. Just look here in the North East at the way the Labour Party, the London-led Labour Party, have treated you. Over the years, they've sent up people like David Miliband to the Shields, Peter Mandelson to Hartlepool, before he went off to become a European Commissioner. And now we find in Sunderland, and in seat after seat across the North East, held by the Labour Party, that despite the fact in nearly every constituency in the North East of England you sensibly voted leave, those MPs don't want to leave. Those MPs want to remain. Those MPs want to force you to voting into a second referendum. And worst of all, those MPs look down upon you, they think you're morons, they tell you you didn't know what you voted for. And can I say on your behalf and on behalf of Leavers across all of the United Kingdom, the hell with you! We knew what we were voting for! We now have a situation where there is absolutely zero prospect 
with this government and with this two-party system of a genuine Brexit ever being delivered. And I thought to myself over the last few months of last year, am I, after 25 years of campaigning, going to allow myself and the 17.4 million to be rolled over by this political class who think they can disrespect our vote, break their promises without there being any consequences. Am I going to do nothing about it or am I going to stand up? And what I did is I founded the Brexit party. This is the fight back. This is the fight back. But this fight back, this fight back now is about more than just leaving the European Union. This is, and by the way, our enemies aren't in Brussels. They want the United States of Europe. They want their European army, but at least they tell the truth about it. The lies are in this country and we've had 50 years of it. 50 years of it. <coughs> In that last referendum of 1975, my parents' generation voted for a common market. They were told that's all it was, and yet it became political union. We've had 50 years of lies imposed upon us by our politicians, and the problem, folks, is this. Our leaders simply don't believe that we are big enough, that we are strong enough, that we are good enough, to govern our own country, to stand on our own two feet and to choose our own future and make our own way in the world. Do you know something? I think the people of this country believe that we are good enough and they believe in Britain. Indeed, indeed today, we are lions led by donkeys. That is what we are today in this country. So let's, let's channel our frustration, our anger. Let's channel it into something positive. Let's channel it into a new political party. And yep, there are one or two of us who've been in politics before. Certainly somebody on the stage has been in politics before. Um, and many who haven't been in politics. But do you agree with me that by standing up and fighting for our democratic rights, these fine people are doing the right thing? So this is a positive political movement. What I'm saying to you today is that this is about more than Brexit. This is about whether we are a democratic country. It's about how the rest of the world sees us. This is about, this is about what we want to hand on to our children and grandchildren. It's about respecting the legacy of the massive sacrifices made so that we could be a free and democratic country. So let us, let us be positive in what we're doing. We know that both Labour and the Conservatives have let us down and we know in this European election, your Labour candidates here in the North East all want a second referendum and all want to remain. No Brexiteer in the North East of England can vote for the Labour or Conservative parties. They've got to vote for the Brexit party. And to show you the new positive tone the different new politics that we in the Brexit party intend to bring to this country, I'm going to give you a sneak preview of our party election broadcast 
which is not going to be shown on television until next week. And due to the marvels of modern science and my confidence that the engineers will not make me look completely stupid, have a look, have a look at the Brexit Party election broadcast. Morning. <laughs> Sorry, I've forgotten that. I'm blonde. Put my nose off. People gave their lives for the right to vote. To be able to change the things they didn't like. We thought our votes meant something. But we've been let down. We've been betrayed. Our country has been humiliated by politicians. Those who we trusted with our vote. We deserve so much better than this. Politics is broken and our democracy is under threat. Enough is enough. It's time to change politics for good. That's why I'm standing. That's why I am standing. I am standing. I am standing. That's why I'm leading the Brexit party in the European elections on May the 23rd. It's why I'm standing for the Brexit party. So my community isn't decimated by politicians who don't listen. And that's why I'm standing for the Brexit party. Because we deserve better. We deserve politicians we can trust and who deliver on their promises. There is a huge disconnect between the MPs and the people. We have all seen what can happen when people lose faith in democracy. MPs can no longer be trusted to represent the will of the people. They say we didn't know what we voted for. That we're stupid. That we're racist. But we're none of those things. We are ordinary people. Business people. We are brothers. Sisters. Fighters. We are doctors. Entrepreneurs. We are the 17.4 million people who voted to leave. And we deserve to be heard. We believe that without democracy, we have nothing. We all deserve to be heard, and in June 2016, 17.4 million of us voted to leave the European Union. And here we are, three years on, and nothing has been delivered. Our vote has been betrayed. This is about more than Brexit. It's about democracy, our country, how the rest of the world sees us. Our politics is broken, and it's time we did something about it. The Brexit Party is about change. You can do something with your vote. Vote for the Brexit Party and change politics politics for good. Vote for the Brexit Party on May the 23rd and let's change politics for good. Very good. So, do you agree? Do you agree this is the new positive politics? Do you agree that if we stand together we can beat the establishment? Do you agree that if we're prepared to tell them again, we can leave the European Union and win back the independence of our nation? Yeah. And do you agree that the two-party system now serves nothing but itself and it's time it was destroyed and replaced by better people? Yeah. And will you stand with us in this election on the 23rd of May? Will you go out and tell your friends and tell your family, can we hear in the North East deliver a crushing victory for the Brexit Party, for independence and for democracy. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. I'll hold one up too. There we are. change politics for good? Yes. Can we win? Yes. Are we going to win? Yes. Are you with us? Yes. Thank you. Oh dear, dear. I did tell you he was back. Yes. And he's been in training, didn't I? I mean, he's just... He's warmed up. I know. We're fired up. And we're going to win, ladies and gentlemen. Now, we've just got time for a few questions.
Um, I'll let Nigel get his breath back. Please so do. Please do. <laughs> <laughs> um, a question for Anne, which is a really important question, actually. It's from Natasha and Alicia from Sunderland. Yes. We're young Brexit supporters. We're always told that only old people voted to leave. Are we young people invisible? You're not invisible, but you don't always make your voice heard. And you know you need to make it heard. Because you know what they're saying on the other side of this argument. They're saying if they wait long enough, all we old folk are going to die off. <laughs> and then all the young folk are going to vote to remain. Show them they're wrong. You know where you stand with Anne, don't you? I call her... No Waffle Widdicombe. <laughs> um, now, the next question, we can have a bit of fun in politics. Uh, it's a serious business, but Nigel, we, always, we quite often get this question. You'll be surprised, no one's asked you to marry you today. Oh gosh. <laughs> but, but the next question is, what's your favourite beer? Well, I do like a pint of beer, as you all well know. Um, and indeed, I've never been photographed in public without one in my right hand. But. This is, uh, Richard and I are on the road full time, Anne's with us for much of it. This is actually a pretty gruelling business, doing this seven days a week. And so, in the interests of winning this election, of giving... Things are looking up. <laughs> of giving the political class a bloody nose, I'm trying... <laughs> I'm trying to be off the beer, but it doesn't look like it's going very well, does it? <laughs> Cheers, everybody. Well, <laughs> you couldn't invent uh, it, could you? It's a fun, isn't it? Now, isn't it? Some things never change. <laughs> <laughs> um, Harry from County Durham. A question for Anne. Will we now be paying £46 billion to leave the EU? What on earth are we getting in return? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> what did I tell you? <laughs> I mean, you couldn't make it up, could you? How anybody could agree to pay billions... Chairman, there is no question now. And I, for 25 years, I'd wanted a free trade deal, but we haven't asked for one. There is no question now that the only way Brexit can be delivered it's for us on the 31st of October, the new date, Halloween, <laughs> trick or treaty, ask yourself that question. There is no way that Brexit can now be delivered unless we leave on WTO terms. A clean Brexit. And we're out. We're out. There'll be no jurisdiction of the European Court of Justice. There'll be no more EU regulations or directives imposed on companies and people in our country. We will get back, and how's this for the northeast of England? We'll get back 200 miles of the North Sea, which is legally and rightfully ours. Oh, well, I nearly forgot. They can go whistle Dixie for their 39 billion. And a final question uh, for Anne. It's from Jane from Bishop Auckland. What happens? What happens if the MPs between these two main parties, if they do some dodgy deal and come together under some sort of customs union deal and prevent us MEPs from taking our seats? in Brussels in July. What would happen then, Anne? Well, it's very straightforward. First of all, they will try and do that. And even if they don't succeed in doing it quickly enough to stop us uh, taking our seats, they will do it as soon as they can thereafter. But do you know, it doesn't matter that we won't be in the EU Parliament. What matters is that if their deal is dodgy and we have not left, 
then we will make them leave and we will take over Parliament at the next general election. <laughs> You heard it loud and clear, ladies and gentlemen. We mean it when we say we're here to change politics for good. We are here and we can do so much together. Thank you very much indeed. But before we go, let's just make sure that everybody's still awake. Up we go. Up we come, everybody. Stand on your feet. Let's have your placards up. Hang on, Richard. Hang on. Let's get up the front. Everybody up the front. All come out the front, the team. All on the stage. Hold them the right way round. <laughs> There we go. Well done. What do we want? Brexit! When do we want it? Now! What do we want? Brexit! When do we want it? Now! What do we want? Brexit! When do we want it? Now! Thank you very much indeed, ladies and gentlemen. Have a great weekend.